The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Say to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Every believer in Christ, being an ordinary person, can really have the same things in Christ alone, not glory in the flesh. The way how Apostle Paul explained to us the things which he has seen in the third heaven, and he said they are not what to be spoken of. The man who knows what it meant to be to go down in the basket, the same man knows what it be to go up into the heaven and look the third abode of Christ. And this man said, those are the things which we are not to speak. But the things in Christ, any ordinary crack of a believer who doesn't even have the true importance towards Bible doctrine can experience because it is of grace. But the believer who has been given the maximum amount of doctrine to be learnt and to be told or to be communicated has a lot of responsibility to teach them the importance because as we can change our classes in this world from lower class to middle class to upper middle class and then higher class and then upper higher class, that's not possible in the heaven when once you quit this old either with, either with your death or with exit resurrection whichever way Christ seems fit to take us back home because there you don't have time but you do have the classification of the believers there you cannot plead ignorance tell him to the point Lord how much I have wasted my time in this earth I would have rather invested my time in communicating the truth or learning the truth or explaining the truth or myself growing in the truth so that I could have completed from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 22 21 do you know what is the mission of a life of a believer it starts with Genesis 1 1 and it has to end with Revelation 22 21 at least once in your life upon the knees and why I do prefer for you to the knees because you will be having tough concentration and you will not have an easy say to quit because you got a phone call you got a friend to visit you you got an XYZ works when you make a commitment to the Lord and you need to read at least daily once a chapter this target could be easily achieved and this target will be hurdled around by many attacks through Satan because Satan knows if you know the truth, the truth will set you free and it will give you each and everything whichever could be feasible for you except doctrine because Satan also knows positionally you have been made superior than to the chief fallen angel and it knows very well experientially to grow up you require doctrine as a nutrient and if it obscures doctrine from the churches or from the pulpits or from the theological seminaries where exegesis should be the order of the day as I have told you it will be the ministry of Ladgar the Holy Spirit in the truth itself the fruit for the hearers the fruit for the preachers if it is not the ministry of Ladgar the Holy Spirit plus Bible doctrine then there is no fruit exactly a male and female copulation for the fruit of their womb it is not between a male and a male or it is not between a female and a female or it is not for bestiality the way how Lord designed to get the fruit Lord designed to get the fruit only through a male and a female copulation exactly it is through the spirit and in the truth that we will have the hearing of our fruit and if it not have the hearing of your fruit you meant to say the pastor has really lost the vision wherein the vision is to be constantly filled of the spirit and to purchase the time only the believer can purchase the time no matter whatever the circumstances they are no matter however country he survives where there is no Christianity for him or XYZ deeds in this world the way how he can survive is in the privacy of his soul by the confession of his sin and spending the time in the remembrance of Christ till we come we need to be occupied with Christ with Christ is the doctrine with Christ is our life with Christ or in Christ is ultimately what the same Apostle Paul experienced will be given to you irrespective of the liberty what you have been given and you need to grow up in the doctrine we need to be so much thankful to Christ to the way how he controls the history the historical trends he rules around upon us but what we are doing we are you we are using the grace of God in vain not to change our position from positional experience from positional sanctification to experiential sanctification to become like a winner believer to become a leader to rule the nations but rather we are happy thinking that just entering into that heaven is enough and let us be 
like the peon for centuries and for the eternity to come. This eternity, where you are going to survive, you will be bored to be a peon. You will be not having your own inheritance. You will be not having your own property set for us in First Corinthians. Because these are the men who practice adultery. These are the men who practice lies. These are the men who practice XYZ works of their flesh. And what they are going to get? They are going to get nothing because the yielding will be wood and stubble. And the yielding process for wood and stubble is nothing but only the sure foundation of Christ being sealed upon them. They themselves will be saved. But the works they do without the mentor ministry of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit, everything will be burnt up. Eventually, we cannot have any hope from a carnal believer rather than a spiritual believer who thinks he's walking in the Spirit, but rather he's not performing the deeds of the Spirit. And he concentrates and substitutes morality and the human deeds as the only method which Lord would be pleased. Even those works will be eventually burnt out. Our Lord has designed for us to be in the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit, to live in the Spirit by searching the Scriptures diligently. The first work of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit is to cleanse out your home so that the old sin nature, though it has lost the power at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone, it is no more the old sin nature that will reign upon you, but it is the mental ministry of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit, that will reign upon you. And you have to give an S to Ladgar, the Holy Spirit, all the time in your volition so that it is no longer you who lives, but Christ who lives in you. And to live Christ in you, it requires doctrine, the mind of Christ. And if it is no mind of Christ in you to be thought accurate, so that you can understand the truth in the original essence of the exegesis, the truth in the isagogical essence of the exegesis, the truth in the categorical essence of the exegesis, so that you can understand more more clearly in the dispensing technique of dispensation and rule with constant agreement of Christ like a bond slave and like a believer in Lord to that great royal family being baptized into one spirit by Ladgar the Holy Spirit really causes your life to become like a winner and this winner believer passing down the three adult stages of the spiritual life followed by spiritual self-esteem and then by spiritual autonomy and then to spiritual maturity will eventually lead him up to enjoy and to experience what it would be abundant of greatness to you when you enter into the heaven as described in 2 Peter 1, 3 to 13. The great passage it tells when you follow the seven principle of this, to faith add your knowledge, to knowledge virtue, and the methods what you have been told, absolutely to all of these things you need to have love. Then you follow these things, your fruit will be great and your abundance will be great into the eternity when our Lord calls us back home. Dear brethren, till that time, every day, every second, we need to purchase and put back in the mental ministry of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit. When we are not capable of doing it, you meant to say there is something which is hindering you to do that ministry work. That hindering is none other but your own old sin nature. That hindering is none other but your negative volition. That hindering is none other but your unbelief and disbelief in Christ. But what we have in faith, in faith we take everything to the Lord. And faith thrust technique is one of the problem solving device in the front line of the soul. Therewith we cling on to the promises of Lord. And we cling on to the experience of Apostle Paul, which he has told in Second Corinthians 12, 1 to 2. He will say, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ 14 years ago, caught up to the third heaven. Paul recounts a remarkable experience he had enjoyed 14 years previously. A carnal-minded Christian would doubtless at once have boasted of such an experience. But Apostle, realizing that it is not expedient to boast, had refrained from any allusion to this experience for 14 years. He had just told us of a humiliating experience experience as in the body of chapter 11. Now he tells us of a wonderful experience that had been as a man in Christ and plus the neomitas of Christos which meant to say N, in Christ, in Christ in Christ. It is no longer you who is going to survive. It is Christ in you who is going to survive. It is Christ, 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 the hope of glory. What is Christ? It is not the same experience what Paul had on the way to Damascus that you look Christ. Christ is not the experience what the people looked at the resurrected way. It is not the experience what you are going to look. Christ is nothing but Bible doctrine. Christ you are going to look is nothing but exegeomai subject of explanation through isagogical and categorical over the dispensing technique of dispensation. How you are going to look Christ, how you are going to be in Christ, it is none other but the mind of Christ. That's why Second Peter 3 to concludes, remember memnesco lot of doctrine, which is through the holy apostles and the holy prophets. Holy prophets being the Old Testament doctrine, holy apostles being the New Testament doctrine. That is how Christ resides in you. 
you the hope of glory. And have we not known how many times it is great for us emphasized to be filled with the knowledge of Bible doctrine, to be filled under the controlling power of ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that it can in return energize your activated human spirit, so that your spiritual resurrection can happen to your life through the knowledge of Christ, through the knowledge of Christ, through the knowledge of Christ. Many foolishly arrogant people will come and tell knowledge puffs off, that is through emotion. But we are not here to be puffed up in the knowledge, but we are boasting in the glory of Christ. For example, if you want to know your countrymen very well, and if you have a great influence towards your prime minister in my country like India, or chief minister of my state, then what do I do? If I go to that person, my work will happen. So what he will do? I know that man very well. Don't worry, I will see that he is going to do your work. That means that is not boasting. Exactly in the same manner, we boast in Christ that we know where he lives, where he resides, where he thinks. Our Lord lives in righteousness, in judgment and in truth. That's why our Lord has told to till out your fallow grounds and get back into sowing of the seed, not sowing of the thorns. The seed is the word of the Lord again, so that we could be occupied with Christ, we could be living in Christ. The same experience what Apostle Paul had, and he says, in Christ I knew a man. He didn't say, in flesh I knew a man. It is only in Christ, it is only in doctrine that is going to be evaluated at the judgment seat of Christ. It is only Bible doctrine resident in your soul that will be evaluated. How much of doctrine you have been inculcated to your soul, how much of doctrine you have been remembered, that will be evaluated, dear brethren. And there is no other cheap method, there is no other substitute for it, that through speaking of tongues you could be edified. No, no chance at all. There is a constant process of sitting and learning. God can do anything for us, but he cannot transform your soul for edification. Apart from learning constantly, day by day, in the word of the Lord. Do you know how much doctrine is there to be communicated? Every day if I could preach for morning, one hour, evening, one hour, even 40 years of my life has not been required. Even that is a small amount of time. But we cannot complete doctrine. And that's why Lord says, day by day edification, day by day edification, it is a constant discipline of a process to your soul. And that constant discipline of process in your soul really wins out the angelic conflict, the unseen spiritual warfare. This spiritual conflict demands the constant growth, fortification of your soul and spirit through the word of the Lord day by day, day by day, day by day, under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because it is no longer you who is going to live, it is Christ who resides in you, the hope of glory. And being occupied with Christ is the ultima for us in the problem-solving device when we are going through this third unique adult spiritual stage of the church age. Spiritual self-esteem, followed by cognitive invincibility or doctrinal status quo, plus your problem-solving device is what? Occupation with Christ. How can you occupy with Christ until unless you do not know what he is, where he is, what he is doing? Can you say easily that I have been occupied with Christ, I can do this, I can do that? No! Occupation with Christ demands Bible doctrine resident in your soul. And that Bible doctrine which has to be communicated, inculcated day by day, though your outward man is perishing, inward man has to be renewed day by day. And you know, it's a disciplined process. It is not puffing up in knowledge as the Pentecostal crowd comes up and they tell this guy has a lot of knowledge and he will be puffing up. No. If you know the chief minister of your state, you can tell to him with confidence, yes, I know him. So when I tell to him, he's going to do my work. That's not puffing up. That's helping out. So that others also can understand what is it, what he is. Exactly here, the chief minister resembles to our Christ. The one who knows the Lord is the one who has that living in truth, in, ju in judgment and in righteousness. So that he can show forth to them, anyone who calls upon the Lord, he hears you, only who call upon him in doctrine, in truth, in the fellowship of God, the Holy Spirit. And if you do not know doctrine, his righteousness, his judgment, what he is going to execute, Though he couldn't spare his own Israelites when they failed to believe upon the Lord, how much more you and I in this church age, we think the craft at once could be excused. But then do you know what? Lord is gracious enough, he's slow to anger. 
That's why you are still playing your gimmicks, your cheap tricks of pastoral deceiving attitude in the churches. And the believers ought to focus to know why it is they have been kept alive to learn the doctrine in this church age. It's a great tough task. It's a great tough job. And people can't be here without Christ. And that's what Apostle Paul tells. In Christ I knew a man 14 years ago. And how many years ago can we tell after our journey in life as a Christian in this earth? That I knew entire doctrine, or you will end up eventually sin unto death and never know Bible doctrine. How much far you are from reality, try to understand your true life, not the pseudo life that you are living in this world. The pseudo life headed by Cosmos Diabolicus eventually leads you up to obscure and allure you from the truth, from the word of mind of Christ, so that you are no way in Christ any form apart from your salvation work of positional sanctification. But your experiential sanctification, you are 0.00 because you think paying tithes, paying guilt conscious to be clear, doing X, Y, Z will be a great work. No. The truth what we have in Christ, the truth what we have been given to do in Christ, the truth what we are able to execute in Christ is required for us, dear brethren. And this required procedure, required method, demands a systematic way of teaching the word of the Lord to the people who are coming to learn this truth. And that systematic way demands a day-by-day -day inculcation of the word, day-by-day -day understanding of the truth, day-by-day -day executing of Bible doctrine in our lives. And if this inculcation is not been done properly, then the ministry of a pastor teacher has been failed. The responsibility laid on upon his shoulders has been replaced by personal visiting or counseling or doing XYZ works, but he is never coming to know the truth. And as long as you survive in this church age without the mentor ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you think you are living a life which is a sheer rot of a death one. You are dead. That's what we can conclude. You are no longer in Christ. You are no longer in truth. You are no longer in the way which the Lord wants you to survive in this world, dear brother. You have lost everything in Christ. Everything and everything. Only the one who is in Christ, in doctrine, can realize the experience of Apostle Paul. And whether you believe it or not, it has been equally given to every believer of this church age who calls upon the name of the Lord by believing in Christ. Every believer has been given, graciously granted, graciously bestowed upon him. But there are classification of believers in the heaven who fail to understand the truth, who fail to execute this protocol plan of God, who fail to understand this unique spiritual life. That classification of believers is not temporarily like this, what we go upon this earth from lower class to higher class. But that classification, when you have been classified as a loser believer, you don't have anything to show forth in the suit of your resurrection body. But a winner believer has much to show forth to the praise of his glory in his grace. The crown of glory, the crown of righteousness, the crown of life. He has much more than that to show forth. A ruler for nations. Even the Old Testament saints have not been given this privilege to rule the nations. They have been called to rule only the cities. But we, the church age believers, have been given this great truth in our hands to rule nations. And that qualification, the procedure for you to prepare is right now with the church age. As in the Old Testament, he needs to be, become a king, he has to write the entire law. In this completion of the period of the church age in the New Testament, a believer needs to write the entire Old Testament as well as New Testament, and that meant to say a thorough inculcation of the word from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, to the perfection and completion in Christ, not only the duty of a pastor teacher, but the duty of each and every believer to reach that effective ambassadorship and witnessing to Christ, and to, if possible, recognize the missionary work and go and do will be a ruler in the millennium when he's going to come with Christ. Because he's cognitively invincible. 
and he has reached to the status quo of occupying in Christ. And when he's been occupied with Christ, no matter what sort of evidence testing Lord leads them, either if it is a believer without the gift of a pastor teacher, it is like Job that his life will be examined. If it is a gift of a believer with the gift of a pastor teacher, then his life will be tested like the same way how Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was being tested. Matthew 4.4 4. Man does not live, or live alone by bread alone, but he lives with Christ alone in his word alone. Man is being told not to go for crown without suffering, but with suffering he has to go. That meant to say, not to get easily allured with the pleasures of this world, but rather what the Lord leads us, he knows, and he is leading us, we need to go through that. And the third one, what he is going through is very simple. Do not tempt your Lord, because he is the one who has provided for you. We are not here to tempt again and again and ask again and again to tell what is it, what it is. Serpents consumed them on the way when they tempted the Lord. Their own lust patterns consumed them on the way when they went against the word of the Lord. How much more it would be more to fall into these hands of living world when we have been given graced out the great trinity of all time indwelling in our souls and spirit. And if you do not value this truth, Lord help you at the judgment seat of Christ. Because I know many people who are not interested to grow up in doctrine, but rather they are interested in the cheap substitutes of edification by speaking in tongues. And these people will never edify in the truth until and unless they wake up in the heaven and realize what they have lost in their life. Until and unless they will wake up in the heaven and realize what they would have done better rather than regretting to become a winner believer. They will regret upon the opportunity equally given because this church age is unique. Never it will repeat again in the future, nor in the past it was been done. But once the exit resurrection happens, the privilege is given to the believer. Ordinary clock of a believer is taken out. And no more the believer in the tribulation or in the millennium can weep and wail and get to try to think this indwelling ministry of Ladgar the Trinity in us. No privileges, no 40 absolutes taken out. No rebound taken out. At that time you will really have a tough time to understand what you lost while you were alive in this earth. That's why while it has been day, you need to be in Christ. In the dark, you cannot work. In Christ. And that meant to say in doctrine, remembrance of the Old Testament as well as the entire New Testament. So, the third heaven speaks of the dwelling place of God. There are the atmospheric heavens, then the starry heavens, that is the celestial, celestial, and then the third heaven wherein the throne of God. Apostle Paul speaks of the third heaven as paradise, indicating that's what that is not the paradise of the heaven, indicating the blessed of the third heaven as seen of joy and beauty and glory, a garden of delights where no sort of death will ever come. He is careful to tell us that it was not as a man in the flesh that he was caught up, but as a man in Christ, of his natural advantages as a man in the flesh. He tells us in other in other epistle that he counts them but filth, but of position and privileges as a man in Christ he can rightly glory. Caught up into heaven, he was no longer conscious of the body with its needs and weaknesses. There he had heard things of which it would be wholly out of place to speak, even to Christians while on earth and in these mortal bodies. Let us remember that though we have no such miraculous experience as being caught up into the third heaven, at all that was revealed to the apostle when caught up belongs to, even to the simplest carnal believer as being only in Christ. But this Christ of a believer to have the permanent weight of glory of Christ, which is imperishable crown, he needs to grow up in Bible time. So which way you go, you decide. In the next day, we shall continue our discourse. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life, inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ in the privacy of your soul. That is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for you is very simple. Believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. And whereas for the believer, the mandate is to memnisco, to remember and get back to the zakar, the Lord of doctrine which has been given to us, the Old Testament as well as the New Testament, and grow in grace and knowledge of biblical truth by 
searching the scriptures diligently and whereas so that you can know the truth and the truth shall set you free and whereas the duty of a pastor teacher is to preach the word kerosothon lagan the diamatrum of witnesses where it has been called to herald the word to communicate the truth though the outward man is perished the inward man has to be renewed day by day and the diamond from my witnesses in Wellington Trinity, Bible in our hands, and above all, we have the witnesses who could be our hearers. If there are no hearers, do not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our hearers. But we need to do our work faithfully unto Christ, no matter what it comes. So which way you go, you decide. The next day we shall continue our discourse. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to our fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that God guard the whole spirit and in these things, and make it a source of blessing and challenge. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.